I'm going to talk a bit about a project we did with Bomer and Kirkland up at Neuriston Crescent. So the site is in the west end of Edinburgh. You can see the, the Google Maps screenshot of the site. So it is, um, just, oh, I can't use the pointer, but it is that the structure adjacent to the railway and bordered by the road to the south. So you've got Neuriston Crescent to the south, the railway line to the west, and then the western approach road to the north of the site. And it's pretty obvious that there is quite a height difference across the site there as the, the road goes under the railway and, and the um, Western approach road goes over both of them. So there's quite a, from south to north, quite a height difference across the site. Um, I'm gonna talk about two main, or two of the more interesting sections of the work on the site, which was the Tower Crane Foundation, which was a little bit non-standard given what was around it and the embankment support for the network rail embankment, which was a prop sheet by a wall. So firstly, we'll have a chat about the um, network rail embankment. So prior to us getting involved, the existing structure was demolished and there was an existing masonry wall supporting the network rail embankment. This had been secured with some, uh, some 6F2 against it to prevent movement. The new structure involved the construction of an L wall slightly in from the masonry wall along the network rail embankment. And to install that, we were required to provide some temporary support. So as the design progressed, we realized quite how hard this was gonna be with the kind of network of ground beams that were being installed and the other constraints on the site. So we elected for a prop sheet power wall solution um, this was for a couple of reasons, main uh, kind of the deflection limits on the actual network rail embankment and the ground conditions, you couldn't pile very deep. So we couldn't really go with a cantilevered sheet pile solution. And we quite usefully, we had a collaborative approach with the permanent works engineers, allowed us to use their ground beams that were pre-installed before the sheet piles to prop off of and kind of give a very efficient solution. So I've got the plan view there, which shows kind of the sheet piles. There was a section of contig walls further up where the, um, the cantilever was higher, but this section was elected to go with sheet piles. And then a section showing the construction sequence. So it was uh, quite an interesting little project, but it, it kind of solved the solution well and gave something that was both buildable and kind of fairly efficient in the fact that we didn't have to use thrust blocks. The second interesting part of the project was the Tower Crane Foundation. So this is an early sketch of the location of the Tower Crane. So around the Tower Crane, we had a contig pile wall on two sides. We had a number of services, so manhole chambers and things that were proposed around there. And then we had further permanent works ground beams to the south of the um, Tower Crane Foundation. When we started looking at this, we could not kind of carry out a, a tower crane that fitted in the gap that we had because of the kind of the pile spacing from the contig wall and the, the other foundations. So we elected to combine this tower crane foundation with the permanent works ground beam to the south, um, which kind of gave us a solution that was a bit more complicated to, to design, but it did give us a workable solution that fitted in the space. Because of the extra depth we had to put onto it to get beneath the ground beam, we had to go beyond what the contig pile wall had been designed for. So we also had to deal with some temporary propping to actually allow it to be installed. And that can be seen in this picture of when we went on to inspect it, you've got the, um, the propping just up above it, provide some temporary support until the base was actually cast. So it was, yeah, again, another, another interesting little project that had a lot of tight site constraints and made it made a bit of, a bit of a challenge. And finally, we've got a bit of a video that Boma's has made, and this shows the, the construction as it went on, well, at least the kind of groundworking side of it and their work on the site. So at the start, you can see them looking at the central kind of core and ground beams in that area prior to them doing the propping. So the, the railway is to the left of the site and the Tower crane base was on the, the back right hand side. You can just about see the propping going in there. 
and you can see the sheet piles going in now for the embankment and the propping and they quite quickly got the, the wall constructed backfilled against it to allow them to remove the propping and yeah the tower crack went up fairly quickly so that was kind of our main involvement in the start of the project so I'm going to hand you over to Josh now, I think, for a bit on a bridge demolition scheme. Thank you, Dave. Um, 